get a verb form, which is Docker. Uh, have you ever heard of Docker? No. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, just to say a few things about it. Um, we have uh, 1,000 employees. Uh, we are in, uh, in uh, three different places. We are in Budapest, Luxembourg, in, and in, in Los Angeles. Um, here we have like 70 pro um, programmers, uh, software engineers, I'm one of them. And uh, Docker was kind enough today to sponsor this event, so um, we, could, uh, we could have Elio here. Um, so we are very, very glad about it. And Elio is involved in many open source projects uh, like Mozilla and Tor. Uh, he's also a conference organizer and a designer, so uh, we are very excited to hear his presentation. Thank so again, thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, yeah, as uh, we have a few new people coming, just find a place. Thank you, Doppler, again for paying for my flight. So, uh, I think, I think this slide should better represent me, especially this illustration as well. So I'm EO. I especially put that on there because it said EO, uh, actually Choshi, which and Koshi means recycle bin in Albania. So it's very important that you say Choshi. Um, I'm tech speaker at Mozilla, same with Gabriel. So Mozilla gets us to many different conferences, events um, all around Europe and the world, and we speak to audiences about Mozilla products and web technologies, about all the things which currently matter to us. And I'm also a founder and designer at Ura, which is an open source company I founded a few years ago. So if you have an open source project and you want to improve a bit the design and usability aspect of that, you can ask us for help and we, care, uh, we take a bit of care to help you with the design, logo, branding, and generally user experience as well. Um, related to that, I'm also a designer at Uni, which is a small project. Okay, it's not so small to be honest, it's quite big, of the Tor project. So you are probably using Tor at some point of your lives. I hope not to do think illegal things but to uh, not be tracked on the internet. <coughs> and also Uni is part of the Tor project. And Hungary is, I think, a pretty, in a pretty good state nowadays, politically. Okay, sorry, I should, maybe, maybe not. Okay, <laughs> but there's not, not a lot of internet censorship going on, I assume. But in many other countries, there's a lot of internet censorship. And Uni, uh, our tools, you can use Uni to actually measure internet censorship. So in uh, Iran, for example, where you have a lot of repressive uh, regime, um, they actually block like hundreds and thousands of sites. And with Uni, you can see what is blocked. And we get that measure these measurements, and we can, journalists can use that as a measurement to, to talk about, to write about what is happening in that country. And especially in Turkey, when during small periods they are blocking WhatsApp, Twitter, and then they are releasing that again, you can actually see that in uni measurement what is happening. Oh, at this time it's being blocked, at this time it's being unblocked. So you can create a story of what's happening politically in that country as well, instead of just writing without backed up data. And yeah, this is a long story, so, and this is not really part of design. Um, but if you are interested after after this uh, talk, please talk to me and we can, I can explain a few more things about that. I also co-founder of Identia, which I'm going to show you also in this talk a bit, which is a visual assets management software. So if you have a company, if you have a project and you have all this journalist asking you, hey, I need your logo, I need your... Um, assets or whatever and you send them a zip back and forth and they ask you for another resolution instead of doing that you actually just create an identity page put up all the assets all the colors all the fonts 
and people should just can get whatever they need without asking for every specific resolution. And this is an open source project we are creating right now. Um, everything else right now is proprietary. So I hope this might be useful also for your projects in the future. Yeah. Um, so this is what, how it all started. You might see my blurry face here uh, with a few other friends at FOSDEM. Have any one of you been at FOSDEM? Do you know FOSDEM? Only Gabriel? We should get some of you to FOSDEM. FOSDEM is the biggest uh, developer conference, open source developer conference in Brussels every year in February. And there are like 7,000, 8,000 developers gathering in one place and everything open source, everything free software is happening there. And since four years, we also have an open source design track there. And it's basically about all these designers and people who care about design in open source. And they gather in one place and give talks and help other developers and projects to improve their design. And this is uh, our website, opensourcedesign.net. And if you're interested to get involved, there are many different ways. We have a forum, we have a discourse forum. Probably many of you know discourse, it's an open source free software forum. And we also have a job board, which might be interested for you who have a company or other people who want to actually get some gigs. So the job board works like that, that you have a project and you need someone who can help you with this project mostly design related. And we have a few um, official logo for whatever, or I need an illustration for a 404 page. And people just can submit this job postings without a free of charge. And other designers who come across this page can contact you and get this thing going. And I think this is one of the biggest job boards in open source. And yeah, this is how I got my gig at Tor, uh, actually, two years ago. So uh, someone at Tor asked, hey, we need a designer for the style guide we are doing. And I just reached out to them. And I'm working now, I think, there since two years or something. So it started like pretty small, but it was a pretty big thing for me. Before I go on, I just want to have some background. I'm sorry if, if you if you don't want to say anything, um, if you want to skip it, uh, that's also um, understandable. But maybe some small introduction of what you are doing. Um, starting from, uh, you, want to, you want to start? Uh, you want to start some introduction, what you are doing, so we can understand? Yes. I uh, was a uh, <coughs> member of the Linux user association from twenty two to two. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Okay. So you were uh, you are mostly interested in Linux? Okay, cool. You? I'm a designer, a graphic designer, and 
So you see a lot of general... The presentation is interesting for me because uh, it's all about uh, the engineering and the, the uh, flow of the open source project. So Got it. Basically, I'm um, here for this. So I might be boring you a bit with all this design talk, but I think if you want to... The reason I'm talking about design is because a lot of open source software is so powerful and so useful but people are not using them because they are not so usable. Um, so for example, LibreOffice is doing a lot of changes nowadays, so it makes it usable for more people. And this is one of the examples I'm really proud of to be pushing towards, so it's just getting easier. You there? Hello, uh, my name is William. Uh, I'm here because of uh, Gabriel. He let me know about this. You want to get a job in design? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yes, that's 
sites or API solutions for, uh, for our work. And I'm also the developer, contributor of OpenStreetMap. That's a surprise. <laughs> I was thinking when you were talking, yeah, you must be involved in OpenStreetMap as well. And I Yeah, I just want to pass the waters to see um, who is into what. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy there are a few designers here, so I think there might be enough material for an open source design meetup. So actually, I've so there are no cheap flights from Tirana to Budapest, so I just want to offer <laughs> this as a, an alternative because we're going to have the open source design summit in. Um, 2nd to 4th November. And actually, if you are interested in open source design, which you might decide after this talk if it was bad or not, you might actually come uh, to the summit and meet us there. And we're going to talk there in three days. We have designers from LibreOffice, from Nextcloud, from Tor, um, and Mozilla as well. And we're going to um, help each other and work in the same direction so we can all collaborate on forces. So I've heard, for example, the community in Budapest is a bit uh, split into different projects. So it would be great maybe if uh, some projects could join forces. So this is what we are doing in open source design. Everyone is having their daily job, daily life, but we get together just to work on open source design. and. Yeah, help each other, basically out of that. So we have also an open source design meetup in New York City and Tirana as well. And they meet every one or two months or so. So it would be great to get that Kickstarter also in uh, in Budapest. So if you are a designer, I think I had we had like three, four designers here. We can talk afterwards and see maybe if uh, you want to do, um, yeah, a meetup. So actually, going forward with this, I want to show you about Identity Hub. And this is something I'm going to sit down now, as it's uh, more of a live demo. So I'm going to show you how you can use your own brand, your own project, and host every icon, every logo on there. So for example, we have here a Thunderbird. Who of you are using Thunderbird? Do you like the new logo, Thunderbird 60? Much better? No? Huh? Because I did that. Uh, no compliments? OK. Sorry, I'm kind of new to that. What is Thunderbird? Like what, a browser or what is it? Good question. Sorry, I, because I think, I thought like everyone I thought that Thunderbird is famous, but yeah, that's a good question. It's a it's an email client, okay. so like Outlook, okay, but it's okay. it's an open source email client uh, from Mozilla. Right. It used to be so famous as Firefox in the early days, okay. but then they just abandoned Thunderbird. Okay, yeah. So we did a new a visual identity with Thunderbird actually, and they asked us where they could find the logos and the assets. And I told them, hey, we are doing this project, which is Identity Hub. Would it be cool to host it there so you, you can share it with your friends and your colleagues? And they said, yeah, sure. So what we did here is that we have the different versions of the Thunderbird assets. We have the, OK, this is the cut it here. It's an alpha version. It's still work in progress. If you have a problem, just submit a pull request and fix it yourself, OK? Uh, the code is open on GitHub, and yeah. Or you can open an issue as well. So we have different logos here. We have the horizontal word mark. We have the vertical word mark, only the word mark. And what you can do here, actually, is that you can just get the logo on as SVG, as PNG, or JPEG. 
So if you want to do a website and you want the logo in a specific resolution, let's say I want this for my website header, I want this in, what happened here? I, I want this in 300 pixel. And Identity App is converting that automatically. And you just tap on download, and hopefully a download will appear. No, 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 no. This is the bad thing about live demos. Yeah, so, okay, here we get that. So, for example, in this case, you can get the icon, and I just want this in 128 pixel, let's say. You save it, and it converts it to you automatically to that, to that resolution, like that. So if you want a big banner, you can just use another resolution. If you want to use vector, so you just go with SVG. So SVG is basically a web-friendly vector version. Um, if you are dealing with photos, illustrations, or other kind of images, just think about it like that. Um, that camera is shooting um, JPEGs, basically, and JPEGs are made out of pixels, so it has a lot of more information because every pixel, every little square needs its own information. While vectors are made out of geographic, um, geometrical data, the vector is basically um, which make up the whole image, and that's why they have less information and weight less. And the good thing about geometrical vectors is that you can um, scale them up without losing at all quality, while you cannot do that with JPEG, for example. And yeah, you can get the SVG. You can also get a JPEG. Let's try it here. I hope this works now. You can also change the background color of this. For example, let's change it to black. This would look like this somehow. And you can download it in JPEG. So this will appear with a ba black background color in this case. So this is very useful if you want to use it with develop developers who actually have no Photoshop, no GIMP, whatever, and they don't want to change at all something. So you just send them this link here, this um, identityhub.co slash Thunderbird. You just send them that, and this is what they see. Come on. They see basically the same thing here. So I'm the journalist, I'm the developer who want to get these kind of logos, and I want this in a specific format, and I'm just going to put this in myself. So I don't need to bother the other designer who is actually sending this to me. Yeah, for every little change. And this actually eliminates the designer in the middle of the process. So just imagine, um, a conference and a sponsor talking together. So the conference organizer is talking to the sponsor, and the sponsor is saying, hey, here's our logo. Please use it responsibly. And they, you see, see the designer in the email, and it's such a huge mess, back and forth, communicating. Uh, while with this, you can actually just send this page, and you have this description on the sides, which tells the user how they can use this logo, how they can use this asset. You have the colors in RGB and hex. And you have the fonts as well. Sorry, this is a bit squished. It's a bug, but we're going to fix it. Um, Fira Sans in this case. So if I want to use the Thunderbird and create the whole Thunderbird identity, I basically have all the information I need here. I can also download the font, of course. And also imagery. We also support imagery for group photos. You have a conference, for example. You want to have all the speaker photos. If this meetup would have an identity up page, we would have, for example, Gabriel's headshot, my headshot on this case. So this is a group photo of the Thunderbird volunteer team, for example. And 
The great thing about this is that it's open source. So you actually, let me go here. As this is open source, you can actually install this on your own servers. So if you don't trust us, if you think Elio is a bad guy and you should not host anything on his servers, you can just download the code here or download the Docker image and compile it yourself on your own servers, on your own domain and whatever. And you can run Identity Hub yourself, basically. So you can have fsf.hu slash brand, you know, and share that instead of hosting it on our servers. And this is great. I think this is great because it makes it independent and we don't want to keep people on our side and lock them in. I think this is exactly the thing we want to avoid. So yeah, this is, um, this is basically the whole idea of Identity Hub. Currently, right now, it's still in an early phase, but when something great you wanna you can also tell the people is if you don't wanna use something. So oh I'm not an admin here. So if you see that a lot of people are using your logo wrong, squishing it, changing the color, which is not allowed, you can actually do a wrong version here as well. And here in the corner, up in the corner left, you can take this don't use and you get a little X at the corner so you can create a new section like that so let's create a new section here and please do not change our logo squish it torture it whatever and you can just slide the asset down here. And you can tell people that this is not allowed because I've seen I've seen so much stuff which people do and I think you gotta tell them that sometimes these are not allowed. Um, yeah, you can also add new fonts, add new images, new sections. You can do whatever sections you like. You have no limitations on that. And one of the one of the bigger features we are currently planning on right now is a Git integration. So if you are a developer, you are probably no Git or at least sorry GitHub or GitLab. And what we want to do is that we want to integrate Identity Hub as a Git repo, so you can actually work with your developer friends as a designer. And a designer actually works here, but everything is synced over on Git. So we have a little file structure on Git, which pushes every change um, as a Git push, basically. And this is also reflected on Identity Hub. And because the great thing about SVG, um, I'm going, so we are going to talk into the SVG zone here, because I love SVG is that, so SVG is, I think, the holy grail of designers and developers because it's an XML file, which is basically code. But it's, you can actually also create it with any graphic software like um, Inkscape or Illustrator as well. So it's the same file which both developers and designers use. And it can be searched, indexed, and compressed as well. So one example, we have an SVG, which I think is very powerful, is under the Pope. It's a, it's a website which hosts um, MIT licensed illustrations. So you can use these illustrations freely for our own projects because they aren't licensed under the MIT license. And you can customize them, actually. So they offer you a way how to choose a new color for the existing illustration. And for in this example, you just change its purple to yellow. And what is actually happening here is just this little hex code all around the SVG. This is the SVG code. It's pretty basic. OK, sorry, not basic, but it's plain XML. And you just change that color 
you just find, literally find and replace this hex code from this to this, and it changes the whole color. And you can do many other things like that with SVG, like making it bigger, removing stuff, and you can automate that. So you don't need a designer to actually do these changes um, by hand, manually, basically. And this makes it a very powerful tool, which I think, yeah, brings us back to Identity Hub, because we want to do the Git integration, and every little change a designer does is translated into a SVG text change. So it perfectly works in Git. And imagine if you work with a developer um, and they do not want to use any graphic software, but they can use Git, which is great for them. And uh, you can basically be on the same page, but with using different tools. And this is what we want to do with Identity Hub as well. And yeah, I hope that's uh, something which might be useful for, for people. Whew, uh, my water's almost over. Um, yeah. Um, I would like to take any questions on this before we maybe move on with something more interactive. Uh, yes, sorry. After, yeah. Yeah. Um, why not just send the SVG file? Is, or we can have about page on the website of the software? So the main idea is of sending, why not sending the SVG file is because many people don't know how to open SVGs and they don't know how they can convert SVGs. But if he needs uh, SVG, he probably knows it. Yeah, but this is mostly tailored for non-designers. So, so a journalist, for example, who is talking about this new startup, and this new startup is writing or putting all the... Thanks, man. I, I, I'm sure, yes. <laughs> Uh, this new startup is talking about um, ha having their new logos there, and the journalists cannot open the SVGs basically because there are no designer or whatever. So they just go in here and choose whatever they like, but still designers can get the SVG. And the main idea why it's SVG here is that SVG is basically co um, text, as I showed earlier. So it's very compatible with GitHub and generally Git because you can just track the changes. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yeah? Uh, uh, if I want to share something with a uh, customer or whoever that I'm working on, what file type should I upload on the identity code? Yeah. What should the code That's a good question. So you only upload the SVG. And okay. this automatically creates everything else. Okay. Okay. So this here is only SVG. Okay. And we automatically convert to a PNG and JPEG in whatever resolution the user is currently requesting. Okay. So this, I think this makes it also quite easy for designers because, for example, right now here, I click on Upload SVG, and I just choose whatever eight SVGs at once, and they are added at once. Sorry, a few problems here, but you get the idea. And you don't need to do anything else. You, if you want to delete them, you just delete them here right now. And I also didn't mention that. Is something great here is that you have an embed code here under SVG. And that is the the direct. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back in time. Um, does this work? Yeah, this works. I think I, I found a bug now. <laughs> anyway, this is the direct link to the SVG, and this link is not changing. And what we did here is that you can actually update this asset here by clicking on update and choosing another SVG. And this gets updated, but the link is not changing. So what you can do is that you can link, um, use the link and embed the image into whatever pages you are having, 
And later on, inside Identity Hub, you can update the asset and it gets updated everywhere. So you basically can do a rebranding of a company um, without changing the logo everywhere you've used it manually. So this is also one of the idea why we are using SVG here. And a question regarding yeah. the workflow. So how many designers are involved into this project and into Identity Hub projects? Across. Designer, it's only me. Oh, okay. So there is no collaboration between designers. As for the actual software, you mean? Yeah. No, it's only me. And it, right now, it's I'm not really happy with the UX because it has been a, it's still quite old. We still haven't done some UX work, but it's basically a full-stack developer, uh, sysadmin, a business guy.